In this lecture, I will discuss the ways to describe the motion of objects. I will define two types of physical quantities, scalars and vectors, and then I'm going to list in that context the quantities that are important for description of the motion of objects. And I will also present examples showing how to um, connect the discussed quantities to be able to solve simple physics problems involving motion. Let's first start with the definition of motion. In nature, we observe objects moving in different patterns along a straight line, along a spiral, along a circle, uh, in a random uh, trajectory. But all of these motions are characterized with one specific property, and that is that the moving objects change position with time. So the simplest definition of motion and the most general definition of motion is that motion is the change of position with time. There is a number of quantities associated with the motion of objects that we need to define in this lecture in order to be able to describe the motion of objects. Here is the list of those quantities. So first we have displacement, velocity, and acceleration of motion. And then we have also distance and speed of the motion. Those quantities are separated in two groups intentionally because they represent two different types of quantities in regards of how they are defined and what their properties uh, are. The first group, the displacement, velocity, and acceleration, is known as vector quantities. And the second group is known as scalar quantities. For short, vector quantities are simply referred to as vectors and the scalar quantities as scalars. So let's explain the difference between vector quantities and scalar quantities. The majority of physical quantities that we are going to encounter this uh, semester are scalar quantities. Scalar quantities are quantities which can be described with magnitude. So scalar quantities are physical quantities which can be described with magnitude. Let's give a few examples of scalar quantities. So I already listed distance and speed as two scalar quantities. However, we have many more. For example, mass is a scalar quantity. Volume is a scalar quantity. Energy is a scalar quantity. Temperature is a scalar quantity. Pressure is a scalar quantity, and so on and so forth. So what is the common proper, uh, what is the common uh, commonality between, uh, between those quantities that I listed? Well, they're all defined with their magnitude. What does that mean? Well, distance is the distance between two points in space. So for example, 10 feet, five miles, 20 meters, that quantity is defined with its magnitude. Speed is a quantity also defined with its magnitude. 60 miles per hour, 5 kilometers per hour, 30 meters per second. So we have a magnitude of this quantity. We don't have any other information, such as direction, for example. Mass also is defined with its magnitude. 
5 kilograms, 20 tons, and so on. Temperature is another example. We say 60 Kelvin or 55 Fahrenheit or 30 Celsius. So th that's a quantity that has magnitude, but that's it. No other property other than its magnitude. And so scalars being physical quantities which can be described with magnitude um, contain only that much information. They do not contain information such as directionality, for example. Now, vector quantities are quantities that are richer in information in that respect. Vector quantities are defined with their magnitude and also a sense of direction. So one more time, vectors or vector quantities are quantities which can be described with magnitude and direction. Vectors are physical quantities which can be described with magnitude and direction. The very important part here is that vector quantities have direction. So let's give some examples of vector quantities. I already stated that the displacement of an object is a vector quantity, velocity is a vector quantity, acceleration is a vector quantity. Here is another one that's very important. Force is a vector quantity. Momentum is a vector quantity. Torque is a vector quantity. So let's see. Velocity is an example of a vector quantity. Velocity has magnitude. For example, 60 miles per hour. That would be the magnitude of velocity. However, if I wanted to state the velocity of a moving object, I also must state a direction of motion. So therefore, if I wanted to give the velocity of a moving object and say 60 miles per hour, I also have to say in what direction the object is moving. So for example, 60 miles per hour due north is the velocity of this object. If I only stated that the object was moving at 60 miles per hour, that would be simply the speed of motion of this object, which is a scalar quantity. So velocity contains more information than the speed of the object. Acceleration is another example of a vector quantity. We know that objects, when they accelerate, they um, either speed up or slow down, depending on how the acceleration acts on the object. For example, for a moving car, when the speed increases as the car moves, we know that the car is accelerating and the acceleration points in the same direction as the direction of motion of the car. However, we also know that if a car is slowing down, then the car is decelerating, and essentially the acceleration which the car feels points in opposite direction to the direction of motion of the car. So the concept of direction is very important for acceleration because that results in how an object moves. Is it going to speed up or is it going to slow down? Another extremely important physical quantity is force. Force is extremely important because interactions in nature happen through forces, whether from a distance or through contact. And force, being a vector quantity, has a direction associated with it. And you know that from experience. If you want to move an object, you must apply force to that object. And so you're either going to push the object or pull the object. For example, when you're lifting um, something from the floor, you are pulling on it. But at the same time, if you, let's say, are moving a shopping cart, you are either pushing or pulling on it. So you're applying force for that to happen. And depending on how are you applying the force, meaning in what direction, your object will be moving accordingly. 
So this is the meaning of magnitude and direction that we associate with vector quantities.